Hi everyone, let's um, uh, welcome uh, again to Talk About Life. So I might have already this uh, virus within myself, which is asymptomatic. So now I'm meeting that person and we both have virus. So because it transfer from air souls, it, the antibodies also transfers within me. Now when the antibodies enter within me, let's say because I'm a healthy person, the antibodies track that virus. They said, we know this virus already. We have seen this enemy somewhere before. And they recall and they know that, okay, this was this COVID virus. So what we should do, we have done this already in the, that person's body and it has worked for them. So let's do the same thing in this person's body. So that this that same thing in my body and now my body has automatically developed a system against that COVID virus. So the COVID virus was tackled even before getting exposed to my body. You know, I the COVID virus was being uh, put into butt even before showing any of the symptoms or signs. So in the same way, because the population number is so big, so people keep interacting and the, somehow they all have been exposed to uh, COVID by interacting with each other, maybe due to any situation. Uh, it could be because the lockdown was not so good. They were not following the uh, precautions that were there, but the same way they were all being exposed to uh, coronavirus uh, or the COVID the same way they were being exposed to antibodies and it keep transferring from one body to another and they all started becoming immune to it. But one of the factors that I said to you in the very starting is the same factor that is still there, that the people who are living in Pakistan and most of the underdeveloping countries, they live in very difficult situations. They do not live with filtered clean water. They, every day they are exposed to so many viruses. Every day they are exposed to so many diseases that the developed nations cannot even imagine. Like, you know, if you might come from Singapore to Pakistan, you might wow. have uh, yeah, you might have food poisoning, you might have food, uh, you might have stomach ulcer, you might have peptic ulcer, you might have so many diseases just after drinking the water that we drink daily in Pakistan. But this is the water that we drink daily in here. And people's body has developed a new system against all the bacteria and viruses that are coming within these waters. Also, because the systems of sanitation is not very strong in these countries, not very developed. So they get, uh, you know, they get uh, exposed with different kind of um, bacteria through these problems and chemicals, their water, the water often they're getting is already being cultured with some of kind of chemical. Like I can tell you that the water that is being supplied to whole Karachi comes from a lake that is nearby, that is Indus Valley River. And uh, the lake that the Indus Valley River fall into is Kinjar, G, Kinjar Lake. Or so if you go to the Kinjar Lake, it's not being protected by government by being provided filters or with any kind of special equipment. It's just a lake where people go, they swim, they have picnic, they have parties, they throw their garbage in that lake. The people uh, are often take, because it's uh, outside of the city, so people often take the animals, the animals get us are swimming. Also, this, our animals are swimming in the same water that is being provided to the city and the people are drinking from that water. I've got, I've so, got, a, few, yeah, I've got a few questions from a, a non-medically trained background, um, yeah. which is always on my mind. And, and you know, thank you for, for, for all these very, very clear, in, intensive explanation patient patiently to the audience and the listeners uh, a couple of questions um antibodies like what you say you've got this army so 
you may start making your ammunition, right? Some will yeah. be AK-47, some is AK-51. Now, are every antibodies the same? Or it, it, sh it should not be the same? Because it depends on your white blood, blood cells, how it actually reacts to the external. And a lot of factors comes from you. So the question is, are antibodies all the same? So no, antibodies are not same. Just like it depends upon the person, the health of the person, the immunity yeah. of the person, how yeah. what the person is consuming, yeah. uh, what kind of health history that person have. So it, it differs from everyone. Like let's I say see. if I want to protect myself, I might have a revolver, but an army man who is at border, the revolver isn't going to help him. He needs big kind of ammunition right yeah. so that's the same way for antibodies it's different in everyone uh, it depends on what kind of circumstances that person is being exposed to and the person but mostly because um, the population number of uh, pakistan is actually if you would say uh, people are most of the people are either they are rich, either they are poor, either they are middle class. Most of them are being exposed to somewhat similar circumstances. So we can say that the antibodies that they might develop due to certain circumstances could be similar in okay. some ways. So it's like yeah. the AK forty seven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. I've, I've got another, another question, and because you, we 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 have um new understanding of this virus every day, right? New studies and new data came. Uh, at first, they say that it's being transmitted through, um, uh, I should say, uh, little um, droplets of water through your saliva, etc. and now aerosols. And aerosols, I understand, is through the air. Even without yeah. any droplets of water, it would stay in the air for up to six hours. Now, whether or not it's liquid or non-liquid, uh, is water vapor or is just air. Mm -hmm. And my question is always like in my mind: Wouldn't that go so, into? See, wouldn't wouldn't uh, that go into, yeah. yeah? Wouldn't that go into our water system? And wouldn't it go into our sea, ocean, and and because uh, if we understand according to the news reports, it was in the market, right? The, the COVID uh, virus was actually mutated or came from the animals. Um, wouldn't it now go into our rivers, our oceans, our fish? Um, isn't that a logical um, transpose of the concept? Okay, so see, COVID virus, the world has only got to know this virus only for a year. This Yesterday, it was yeah. university of the first patient who was exposed to COVID virus and was, pre, uh, you know, was brought to hospital after being exposed to COVID virus. So often what happens when we get to know virus of scientists, actually, it's not about doctors, it's about researchers it's about the people who are working in laboratories or uh, immunologists epidemiologists researchers phd doctors yeah. not just simple doctors yeah. the phd doctors who are working in one kind of field for years and years and years yeah. the signs of they it are often, yeah so they are often people who get to know about certain viruses and bacteria and different kind of pathogens so yeah. they keep on researching about them and how, what kind of reaction does this pathogen or virus or bacteria give when exposed to this circumstances? How do they transform one, from one person to another? Do they transform from a person to an animal? Yeah. Do they transform from animal to a person? So yeah. they spend years of their life into the laboratories searching yeah. about that virus. But this particularly COVID virus got us from nowhere, right? It, it just got us. We did, we yeah. were not prepared for it. Prepared. So every day, the uh, the scientists or the researchers are coming with new researches. Like just a few days back, we get to know that a Turkish couple 
was able to produce a vaccine for coronavirus. And then really? they tested the vaccine and it, the result did not came as it was expected. And then after that, another company came and they did claim that our coronavirus vaccine is, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the company name, but they said that our coronavirus vaccine is 94% efficient. And then now they are testing. So it actually does take years and years to know about that, how does this virus or bacterial pathogen work? So your thing is right. The first thing that we could get to know about the virus that it transferred through air source because what it showed, like, you know, the kind of symptoms that it showed that the people who were interacting in close confinement, they were sharing the utensils, they were sharing, uh, maybe if they were spouses, they might have been sharing body fluids. So they, the scientists or the researcher get to know that the, the line of transfer of these viruses, that's how they transfer. The next thing, they get to know that how, for how long it can stay in the air. The next part was that how long it can stay on the surface. So yes. just like you mentioned that the, we could, right now, we might not have so much knowledge if it can transfer to the sea or to different kinds of fluids and then it can come back. We did not even know that one person who might have COVID can get COVID another time. And it is happening. We did not know until the first person who had COVID got, was cured from it. And then he got COVID and died from it. Before the scientists were assuming that if you might have COVID once and then your body will start uh, making yeah, antibodies, yeah, yeah. There are you get patients. There are yeah. cases where exactly reinfection. Um, exactly. Yes. And from reinfection, they died. They died from yeah. the reinfection. Yeah. And, and the reinfection now, made it even worse um, the second time round. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, you know, there are uh, right now, I would say it is too early to say anything about it. Yeah. We do know only this thing that the actual Wuhan virus might, that spread it in China might not be the same virus that is spreading throughout in the world. But what if we get to know, no, it's actually Wuhan virus and it has, uh, let's say it has um, um, transformed into itself into another thing to trick the scientists, you know, yeah. because the virus do has ability to adapt to its environment. So we cannot know, maybe it's the same virus who yeah. has already uh, immune itself to a situation and it's now in the coating and it might come again into another form of Wuhan virus. So at yeah, this no, point, I have have no, I'm so fascinated by, by our discussion. I hope we can come back again. Um, Ivan, but I've got one final question and I want you to come back again because I need um, you to educate the general public um, about what you already know and the, the, the model of Pakistan and the situation. I, was, I wanted to uh, share one knowledge that just yeah. came into my mind yeah. that the similar study that of herd immunity that yeah. was being tested in yeah. Pakistan yeah was done in Brazil as well for COVID viruses in the city of Manassas, uh, Manaus. So they did develop herd immunity as well. So you mean in, two, in Belgium? In Belgium? Yeah. No, no, in Brazil. In Brazil? Oh, in the Brazil? City of Manaus, yeah. You, you, so you they mean have, that 70% of the population has already been exposed? Yeah. Uh, so so they, they have... They, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to... You might Yep. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, um, in, in a reality setting in Pakistan, when you talked about COVID station, you mean the people volunteer, um, are, are, are the people encouraged to get themselves tested or do people need to have a certain kind of a, a, a medical paper to get themselves tested? Is, there a, is it voluntary or is it... Um, uh, kind of like enforced that like you only can get tested if you show certain kind of symptoms by a doctor. What is the situation like? And and uh, tell us about all these testing protocols. 
Okay, so in starting when the coronavirus came, obviously people not not were not doing it voluntarily. So the government was actually enforcing people and I told you that just because it's a developing nation, yeah. the government did not have resources to test a lot of people. Although they were doing testing of around 2,000, 3,000 people daily, but they were not capable of uh, doing tests on this large number of population yeah. because they did not have equipment, they did not have kits. So that's yeah. why they were only testing those people who were showing symptoms in start mm -hmm. and also uh, to the families of the people who might have shown symptoms or who were coming from abroad to Pakistan. So the testing was only um, restricted to those the special cases. And then um, what happened that we started making our own kits in Pakistan. So it started to become cheaper at the time because before we were importing it and now the Pakistan have become self-sufficient in kits. So that's why we're exporting it as well. So now, and even then, the most of the hospital did not even have kids. Only few hospitals did have kids because they did, they could not, but they were not able to buy such expensive kit at that time. Only the few government hospitals and most of the private hospitals, like I remember when the Corona kit came first came in Pakistan, only three hospitals did have that kit. Two of them were government hospital and one was a private hospital that is our Khan hospital It's a very big name in Pakistan. It's, it's being in healthcare for so many years. Other than that, no hospital. And then the tests were very expensive. They were test, the government was doing the Corona test for I guess 2000 Pakistani rupees. So that might make $150 or even less than $150. It might, it might be $120, $110. But the same hospital, which is our Khan hospital, was private setup. It was doing the same test for 15,000 rupees or I guess 25,000 rupees. So it was for $250 or maybe $280. It was double the money that the government was doing it because they were private organizations. So they want to make money out of it. Yeah. Then later the situation become better. The government was able to bring, import a lot of uh, coronavirus is kit in, in countries like China and Turkey did send aid, especially the aid came from UN, um, UN WHO did send aid to Pakistan. So yeah. this aid was distributed into different provinces. But even then, because of the lack of the resources, they were only being used when it was needed. So only in the uh, Corona Center. And at that time, we have really strict lockdown, so nobody was flying in and out of the country. Actually, people were flying in. Uh, people were flying to the country, back to the countries, because most of the country was sending the people back. So the only, only those people were being tested, but nobody was flying out of the country. So the, there was no need of testing these people. Yeah. Later, now the borders have been open, people are traveling, now a lot of private and government hospitals have the kit. So now the testing is frequent and now people have to test like just uh, a week back, my brother did has to, uh, but I, if you want to know the number of testing that is being done in Pakistan and compared to a developed country, so I can show you a case study that my brother did travel to uh, UAE, Dubai last week. So in Pakistan, UAE, now every country does require that you have to show them the coronavirus test, right? So when he was traveling from Pakistan, he only got tested for coronavirus through one hospital and he was able to get the report for 4,000 Pakistan rupees. So that would be actually $30, right? But then when once he landed on Dubai airport, they did uh, ask him to stay there and they did uh, do the coronavirus test on him and it costed him around 10,000 Pakistani rupees that is uh, almost 99 or 100 dollars. And then when he was in Dubai, he has to stay in his hotel room for one or two days until he received his coronavirus test. And after he was cleared, 
he stayed there for five days and when he was coming back he has to go through the coronavirus test again at the dubai airport before coming to pakistan so he had to pay again the same amount of money so you see now the number of difference that we have from the developed nations so the tests are more cheaper in pakistan they are being done only once and in only a dire need because of visa other than that nobody's volunteer uh, nobody has volunteered to do the test themselves and also um, in asian countries people do work on the word of mouth right so most of the people when the those who have got uh, their corona test done they have actually spread some misconception that is so hard and uh, they have they put that you know stick into their nose and it's so uh, um, uh, really painful and this and that so people have so many misconception about it and especially people uh, do not trust in these kind of systems yeah. where yeah. so they don't want to go to hospital just for the sake of testing you know yeah. or and uh, just let me tell you one of the things that uh, a large number of population here is middle class so let's say a 70% population of pakistan is middle class so they cannot afford and every household might have at least four to five people living like uh two spouse and four kids three kids at least so every family might have five to six people normally so let's say if you want to go test for corona virus and one test cost you 4000 rupees pakistani so the four family of six it's people not practical yeah it's not practical and people uh, nobody want to spend their money on just testing because um yeah they don't want to do it yeah okay i i i um i would like to actually i do have a list of questions in my mind um can i invite you again on a different session um and i'm very going to i'm going to do it very quickly to upload this on my podcast uh tonight so that people can listen because i was talking to um an american and because i told you about all these uh different conversations with people all over the world um you know different countries react differently and and and, and i hope that um your your clarity of communication um uh, brings light to certain uh, uh people who are listening in especially uh the podcast and then um i hope that you could come back i've got so many questions but you know what i'll do i will list my questions here uh in the text and uh you know some of them could be general about the corona virus some of them could be relating to pakistan but i i am interested in how the whole community or the whole society came together to like fight this like a war zone you know um so because you talked about um this is a muslim country people came together and people volunteered i i am very intrigued about how does a society come together to fight a crisis you know and are fighting it successfully oh. yeah just okay. to give you example of how i'm just thinking can, can we devote yeah. one hour for that <laughs> yeah, I, sure. I, but just to give you example yeah. so people yeah. might want to know what they uh, they next, will be listening the next episode next podcast yeah just to give a little example when the first lockdown was imposed in pakistan and i keep telling you that we are developing nation we are not very good at resources we do not have a large amount of rich people here like singapore like dubai like japan so most of the people belong to working white collar class right or blue collar class actually yeah so what happened in the first lockdown lot of industries were closed people were out of job you know what pakistani people did they start making food banks they came together they started charities so they did form charities of million and billion rupees and they started supporting these people who were out of their jobs who might not be out of their jobs but they were daily wage workers and just in like you know two or three months we were able to form a chain of people who were contributing and most of the people did want to contribute to the cause 
everyone was coming they were contributing through food they were contributing through money they were contributing clothes anything I, I, they could yeah and i would like you to talk about uh, pakistan as a society um, how did it come together to react in a, a countrywide crisis and also i want to ask you in our next episode how did the faith play a part because uh, I, I talk, I talk to many different uh, people, and myself, I'm a Christian. And you know, you've been in Singapore. We respect a lot of different kinds of, uh, of faith. And and myself, my my girlfriend, she was uh, from Pakistan. She was born there. The whole family came by, and um, you know, I, I was still having a conversation with her. She's now in the U.S., and we're still talking about the numbers today. And I say, please stay home. Don't come out of your house. You know, you know. Um, even my friends are Muslims here. Singapore, but I want you to tell us in the next episode a little bit of trailer, all right, so that the people yeah. will tune in. Uh, I want to know how does faith play a part uh, in, in in circumstances like this, uh, on top of your cultural societal reaction. So how does faith come come about uh, in, in 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 taking this fight? Uh, to the next level for success. So I hope that you can um, come back to talk about this to society reaction and how does faith play a part? Um, and I will have other FAQ questions for you regarding um, the, the, the virus, um, et cetera. You know, um, thank you so much, Ayman. Ayman. Um, you know, I've taken your time. Um, uh, welcome uh, again to talk about life.